Hey, what's up guys? So let's talk about Nvidia. Let's talk about the whole deep seek situation and what's going to end up happening about the stock. So basically, if you have if you're not caught up, the concern is that a Chinese hedge fund came out with this new AI model and it's eventually it's essentially so efficient that they were able to train it on only I believe it was like 5 or 6 million dollars worth of uh, GPUs. Can, like comparing that to like uh, chat GPT, which they trained it on, I think it was like a hundred or a few hundred million, like the first model, uh, worth of GPUs. So it's incredibly more efficient. And so the concern here, because the value of NVIDIA is propped up on all these profits from selling these GPUs from the demand from these AI models that we're creating. So the concern is that, well, all these companies basically wasted billions of dollars when they could have just changed some code and made training the model much more efficient. So if the model is much more efficient now, then what happens to NVIDIA's revenue? You know, what we don't need these GPUs, right? Not exactly, because there's something called the Javon's paradox. But before we get into that, uh, if you found the content valuable, hit that subscribe button. I really do appreciate it. So, uh, but getting back to Javon's paradox, it's basically an economic principle that says that as the efficiencies of a technology or a resource increase, more people end up using it. So that's a really big deal because that opens up a whole new economy within the AI space. For example, wind the clock back to like the 1950s when computers were the size of entire rooms. Nobody in like nobody even thought about what a text message was back then. But you know, the, you have this computer that's the size of a room and as it became more, much more efficient, we were able to shrink it down and put it into the palm of someone's hand. So the demand for that technology, for those chips, those computers, it didn't decrease, it increased because the the economy, the computer chip economy, it, it allowed for human innovation to come up with all these use cases for computers that we never even thought of, like Fitbits or AirPods or cell phones. All these things came about from taking this new technology that was huge and clunky and shrinking it down. So I don't think that this is a case for NVIDIA where it's a sell the news type of thing where, oh my gosh, you know, panic, you know, profits are going to plummet. I think it's the opposite. I think what we're going to see is we're going to see an economic boom for NVIDIA because the demand and use cases are going to explode with an AI. Because if these, uh, if this is true, that it is really efficient, it not only means that our current AI companies are going to be able to build much more advanced, much more uh, complicated and efficient AI models. It also means that it's going to lower the barrier of entry for little startup companies. So for example, you could have a little startup that has an idea for an AI model that is a very niche market and the market, it needs to be filled. It needs a solution to their problem. And that's their little AI model that they're trying to create. But they can't afford to spend, you know, $3 billion to train this AI model. So if the efficiencies come way down, we see a lot more little startups start to pop up. And so instead of having all the demand for uh, NVIDIA's GPUs concentrated into big entities like uh, uh, OpenAI or, or like Microsoft, Google, etc., what we'll see is we'll see a lot more spread out demand as like little startups are trying to, to build their AI model, or even just home uh, people, you know, running four uh, NVIDIA GPUs in, in their garage, trying to type up a little AI model for their own workflow efficiencies. I mean, you could have like an AI model that is like, I think the AI will become so embedded in everything, like in all of our apps, our phones, all of it to optimize things. So, okay, perfect, perfect example right here. You could have an AI that is in, and this is a probably a million dollar idea. Somebody wants smarter than me wants to code this. You could have an AI model inside of your phone that actually is able to pick up on, like listen, like for example, the phone would just listen to like words and, and just kind of figure out what type of mood you're in. And then it can suggest what song is most likely to fit your current mood next, you know, to kind of optimize your your happiness or, or filling that, you know, like you listen to music and you, and you have like, you're in a certain mood and that song just, you know, it, it hits that certain mood that you're in. Well, somebody could code a very niche AI to pick up on that and then suggest that song, whatever you're listening to like YouTube music, but you can't, you know, do that with like 
a billion dollars worth of GPUs. That's something that's kind of niche. That, that's a very niche type of uh, AI model that could be filled. But the point I'm trying to make is that we're going to see a lot more of those little AI models popping up that can be trained now because the costs have come down so much. And I think that's actually really helpful, kind of going back to the uh, the demand for GPUs being more spread out than concentrated in these big companies. I, I think that's a really good thing because if these large companies do hit some sort of a ceiling at some point with their uh, large language model development, it's better for NVIDIA to have their demand for their product more spread out amongst a bunch of individual user bases than like one big company because now the risk of your demand just suddenly plummeting it, it goes away to some degree um so i mean you know if, if for example open ai doesn't need to buy any more gpus instead of your re revenue going down it's kind of diversified amongst a lot of smaller startup companies that are working on their own little uh individual uh ai models that fill these little niche markets so i think if anything we might see temporarily while companies kind of reshuffle how their models work we might see a, a brief period where uh, maybe the price of nvidia pulls back a little bit like it's kind of been doing but i think ultimately what this is going to do is it's going to drive a lot more demand for nvidia's gpus going forward i think the only thing that could really like kill the demand for gpus is if some new computer chip technology come out that is way better than what GPUs can do for AI development and, and model training. But, you know, kind of like what happened with Bitcoin. Like, so Bitcoin used to be mined by GPUs, and then they kind of switched over to ASIC miners. So hopefully, I'm not sure if NVIDIA is working on ASIC miners or not, but hopefully uh, NVIDIA is ahead of that game, and they are pursuing other things that can be more optimized for uh, a GPU training. And I imagine they will. They're, they're a trillion-dollar company, and they're not going to let that ball just fly over their head, so to speak. So, I mean, to kind of summarize this, I think that the future for NVIDIA is extremely bullish. I think that uh, what this does is the efficiency is just going to allow for more complex, more advanced AI models to be developed and just grow this entire ecosystem. So like, okay, so going into AI agents, one of the things that a lot of people are talking about is going into the future, you're going to have people hired based on not your own personal skills, but your AI agent set. So for example, if you're like an accountant, you could have an AI agent set that is capable of scanning documents for tax purposes and like compiling all that data and sorting it and trying to find the perfect tax efficiencies. But you get my point is that you're going to have people like that training their own AI models and then they have that in their resume as, okay, you know, it's me, I'm your I'm your accountant for this company that I'm, I'm coming to work at, but I also have all these AI models that can do all these different capabilities. So there's going to be a market for people training their own AI models to do things within their business. So I, I kind of think that it's like a fallacy to look at the AI market and look at the demand for GPUs with uh, NVIDIA and say, oh, well, you know, the, the GPU demand is just for these large language models. I don't think that's the case. I think that's just the beginning and we're going to see just a very diverse range of uh, AI models starting to come out. Anyway, so that's the end of the video. If you found the content valuable, hit that subscribe button. We have a lot more insights about stock market and kind of how different news affects the stocks and whatnot. So if that's something you're interested, stick around. But until next time, y'all take care.